comes from Trudy. Uh, Trudy, thank you very much indeed for today's tale. Father Simon, Brother Matt, Sister Susie, the Drive Time Collective. My confession takes me back around 35 years when I was one of the youngest female bus drivers carrying the good folk of the West Midlands to all their dis- destinations. It was a grand job. We had the rural counties of Shropshire and Herefordshire, the busy, throbbing urban centres of Warwickshire, Stratford, Birmingham, Solihull, Rugby and Coventry. I mean, do go on with your, <laughs> your guided tour of the West Midlands. <laughs> All the towns and cities. Whenever I was on the early shift, a very good-looking and highly polished young lady would get on my bus heading for Birmingham. She was super glam and heads would always turn whenever she appeared. She was very elegant, clearly spent a lot of time getting her look just right. So you get a picture. She would often wear a lavish lace blouson with crochet and ribbon-trimmed overlay collar. It had an elasticated dropped waist and a satin sash. It was like seeing Claire Grogan every morning with a hint of Madonna and aromas of Paula Abdul. Wow. Whatever Paula Abdul smells like. This is quite a contrast, let me tell you, Father Simon, with pretty much everyone else on the bus. She was... Obviously, stuck up and rather... (laughs) (laughs) Right, okay. Also, rather grand with her... Fancy airs and look uh, at me graces. Yeah. Yes, she was fabulous, but boy, did she know it. Yeah. I thought of her as Lady Gladys. That's what I called her in my head. <laughs> Le- look out, here comes Lady Gladys, I would think, as I saw her in the mirror, sashaying her way towards the bus. <laughs> Arrogance oozed from every pore. I wonder how many degrees of ghastliness she's going to share with me today, I would think. She would always give me a smug look of perfection as she got on. Her look said, my word, you're a dowdy little thing in your drab little cabin, driving this drab little bus in your drab little outfit. I sat there, it's true, Father Simon, in my frumpy uniform with my hair barely brushed and no makeup on. She was wearing clouds of eau de spectacular. I wore a a splash of Malibu musk, which made me smell like like a pineapple. And not in an exotic way, more of a Hawaiian pizza kind of way, you get the picture. I didn't actually smell of bread and cheese, but not far off. Every this is, what a bus this is. Yes. Every journey, around four stops from her destination, she would get out her po- compact mirror and lipstick and touch up her makeup. Frankly, she barely needed it. She looked like she'd been made up by an army of Hollywood makeup artists anyway. Skin, just right. Lips, perfect. Mascara, incredible. But then, something terrible happened. This particular morning, June the 21st, 1986, 8-11, I think... Halfway through the ladies' touch-up, if you'll pardon the phrase, my bus, unfortunately, hit a giant pothole. Oh, dear. Oh, no. A giant shudder shook the bus. Everyone jolted, and Lady Gladys was no different. The extravagant blood-red lipstick that she was in the middle of applying oh. shot all the way oh, no. up the side of her face. From <laughs> chin to eyebrow, it looked like she'd been attacked by Freddy Krueger in one of those Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street movies. Unfortunately for Lady Gladys, it was around the time of the invention of apply once and stay all day lipstick. I didn't know there was such a thing. Anyway, she rubbed and she rubbed and it smudged and it smudged. One side of her face was delicate salmon pink. The other was a mass of glowing crimson. She looked hilarious. No matter how, how much she wiped and wiped, that lipstick was not shifting. Father Simon, the reason I need forgiveness and I need to confess is this. There being a young female driver with no hint of a clothing allowance and clearly smelling of fruit, (laughs) I was ever so slightly jealous of this polished, blonde perfection that was Lady Gladys. Here's my confession. I could have navigated around the pothole, but I did not. I watched her in the mirror, waited by moment. There were plenty of potholes to choose from. And I drove my fleet line single decker straight into the pothole. <laughs> Boom! Yes, I hit it on purpose, wow. knowing full well what the outcome would be. Lady Gladys looking like she'd been down the butchers. <laughs> I now realise, of course, that I could have damaged the bus and also all my other passengers could have spilt drinks, fallen over and banged into windows. I could have ruined the suspension. So obviously that's a bad thing. But seeing Lady Gladys look like she'd been stung by a hornet was clearly a very good thing. And I'm not saying being stung by a hornet is a good thing either, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. Anyway, quite a lot of caveats there at the end. Um, 
but kind regards from Trudy, who ends up by saying, funny enough, she never applied her lipstick on my bus again because mm-hmm. she knew what might happen. Look out, here comes a pothole. Sister Susie from the pub. Oh, Trudy, do you know what? I, I, I do sympathise with you here because I, I am not one of those people who looks glamorous when they walk out of the door. I'm just... a bit of wind weather and I just look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. So I would also be jealous of Lady Gladys and also we got to uh, we got sashaying away in the confession which made yes. me smile. Mm. So I'm going to forgive. Brother from another gutter. Well, Suze, as you can tell, I spend hours in front of the mirror before I leave <laughs> the door. Do. Every morning. Um, so uh, Malibu musk, is that really a thing? I never heard of that before. Who wants yeah. to smell like a pineapple? Not me. Um, I'm going to say forgiven because, uh, frankly, which of us could honestly say we wouldn't do the same? None of us. That's who. We'd all do the same. So definitely forgive me. So you'd have aimed for the potholders as well. Definitely, definitely.